Welcome to Advanced Data Analysis 2 with me, Eric Hart, Professor of Statistics at the University of New Mexico. In this meandering video, we're going to look at the first assignment of the semester, and I'm going to show you the workflow, or how I go about um, solving lots of little problems in the assignment, so you can get a sense of uh, one, at least one strategy for you to do the same thing in, uh, for yourself. So let me actually start by logging out of WordPress. I don't need to be in there. And we'll just go to the ADA2 website. And I'm going to be um, clumsier in this, web, in this video than I typically am, um, just to sort of show you how I <clears throat> bump up against um, solving problems. Okay. So I'm going to scroll down to the timetable where we've got the markdown file, the HTML file, and the data file for this assignment. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and save as the RMD file into a folder. I've put on my desktop, I've put an ADA2 temp folder. So I'm going to go into there and I'm going to save it. And I'm also going to notice that the file name with the file extension .rmd doesn't have any additional um, names on there or anything. Some computers will try to append, I'm just going to type this, .txt on the end of a file name and that will make it work differently than um, it should. So you want to have the appropriate file name in there. So I'm going to say, I'm going to save that and I'm going to bring up a Windows Explorer window that shows that folder on my desktop. All right, so I've got my desktop, there's the ADA temp, and there's the file. And in Windows, at least the way I've set up my Explorer window, um, I can click up here and notice I've got the full path right there that I could copy and paste somewhere if I need it. Um, I'm going to show you ways to set what's called the working directory in R um, shortly, and I'll show you a few strategies for that. All right, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to also download the data. Uh, in that same folder, it's a, dot, it's a text file that's fine. In another video, I talked a bit about um, downloading files and file names and things like that. So I hope you have already reviewed those from the previous in the semester. All right. So this HTML file, I'm, I held down Control and I clicked on that. It opened this new tab, and I want to make sure that I. And when I compile the RMD file, that I get a document that looks exactly like this. All right, so I'm going to start RStudio. And I'm going to resize it so it fits in your viewable area. Oh, I'm missing the bottom of the screen. Work with me, Windows. Work with me. All right. So here we are. I've just started RStudio. And I just want to show you a few basic things about RStudio, which will help how it behaves make a little more sense. Uh, first of all, if I look at the, by typing get wd, that's the working directory, it will tell me by default where it's looking for files. And right now the default is users Eric documents. And that is not where my materials are. Okay? So I'm going to show you uh, a couple ways to uh, set the working directory to where we want to work. So in the bottom right hand corner I clicked on files. And this folder should probably be the documents folder the current working directory. I never use anything in there, so I'm not sure what, what's in there. Um, all right, so I want to go up a folder. Do I have a double dot somewhere that will allow me to go up? What does more allow me to do? Go to directory. Ah, here's one way. Okay, go to directory. So I will navigate to my desktop 
into ABA temp and click OK. Right, you might have to search through your C drive or your Macintosh drive, whatever. And once I click there, here are the two files that I saved. Beautiful. Here is the path, C, users, Eric, desktop, ADA2 temp. Under more, I learned this today. You can click set as working directory. So I'm going to click this. It will run this command, set wd. And now, if I um, get working directory, it will return that directory. Other things you can do here is you can do dir to show the directory of files. There's the two files that are in that folder. It's basically doing, you know, showing you what's in this window. These two files in 88 to temp. All right. Why is having the working directory in the right place important? It's because that's where it's going to look for the data by default. So I'm going to um, hijack this for a moment. I'm going to uh, go to, I'm going to set the working directory to be the wrong place. Okay, so when I do a directory now, I don't have the, the text file for the data or the RMD file for the file I'm going to compile. All right, so let's open up in ADA2 temp the markdown file. And let's compile it. I'll click knit. Because the data is in that same folder, it's going to find it. And I have uh, the web page right here. So markdown creates HTML files by default. If you want a nicer, so the, the R markdown or the R studio viewer is not too bad. But if you click on open in browser, it will open it in Chrome or Firefox or whatever you use. And um, and I believe it renders a little bit nicer in an in actual professional browser. All right, minor point. So now I'm going to start the assignment. Remember, I'm in the wrong working directory. OK, so I'm going to. Um, scroll down. I'm in the top left hand corner in the markdown file and you can resize these windows either by dragging um, the divider up and down or you can use these um, maximize minimize buttons up here. I can, right now I want to maximize the editor so I can see a little more what's here. All right. Notice that the code chunks are in these gray boxes. It starts with a triple left inverted comma in the upper left hand corner under the escape key and it ends with it as well. And our studio our excuse me, our studio recognizes that it wants to interpret the code inside this block using R because in curly braces there's the letter R. It can be capital or lowercase, it doesn't matter. All right. So I'm going to press control enter on a couple of these lines. And when it goes to submit the command, it opens the console window so we can see it working. And immediately I stop because we got red and it says error. So it says error in the file that it's trying to read um, cannot open the connection. Okay, no such file or directory. And that's because it's looking in the wrong place. It's looking on my desktop and it should be looking in the ADA2 temp. So this is perhaps the first thing you need to do, go to the right place, click more, set working directory. And now if I rerun that line, okay, this line here, I'm going to press control enter to submit it. It ran it just fine. You can see in the upper right hand corner right under the environment, punt is there. So, here's a good trick. Grab the set working directory command that it put in there for you, copy it, and paste it up here. Now, when you compile this for the first time, regardless of what folder the working directory it, 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 you're in, it will automatically set the correct working directory, and then it will be able to read that data. All right, great. So let's look at the structure of the data. I'll just press control enter on str of punt. It tells me that punt is a data frame 
It has 13 observations, that's the number of rows in that table, and seven variables, that's how many columns there are. After each dollar sign is the name of the column. So distance is the first column name. We have a numeric variable, and, it, and the first few values are shown there. The second variable is hang, it's numeric, and so on. Some of these are integer, which is a special type of numeric, which doesn't include decimal points. Um, but basically, these are all numeric variables. Great. So, um, scrolling through, you know, I'm probably wanting to answer some of these questions. So, uh, let's say that I've read the description of the football data set, and I'm interested to uh, study the relationship between uh, punting ability and the physical performance variables. All right. So I scroll down, read the data set into R. Okay, the structure is there. This is all output. Uh, basically, the beautiful thing about R markdown is that you can have these code chunks, and as you execute lines, it puts the output right in the same document. And then you can write prose around it. All right. So, question two, seven points. Generate summaries. Okay, you can use the summary function, and I actually have already done that for you. And frequency tables using table for each variable, and then answer questions one through seven on UNM Learn. So, uh, this is probably not 